Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about what's happening in current military advances in warfare across the planet. Basically this video is for anyone who is interested in technology and technology related military weapons or products, general household uh, products. So let's get into that. But before that, if you haven't liked the video, click the thumbs icon and if you want to subscribe to the channel, click the red button. My name is Shazi Gio, and I'm talking about military technology advances in 2024. Well, why are we talking about this? Basically, we have to make everyone aware who loves their land, and they have to be educationally aware what is out there if the enemy attacks you. Uh, because the thing is that a lot of the people are unaware and if you have some people who are in the leadership who are buying the wrong products for instance then they're going to falsify the outcome of a conflict with an enemy country so as a reference point I'm going to talk about Ukraine and Russia and a little bit of Israel and Palestine in Ukraine basically you know what's going on uh, it, the war has been going on for one and a half years, about two years now, and basically um, as prediction via artificial intelligence, Russia is really defeating Ukraine from A to Z. Uh, just yesterday, I mean, uh, they took two huge provinces, and uh, they're very, they've got only one more uh, huge city to uh, invade, which is, yes, Kiev the capital of Ukraine. Now the thing is that the technology that they've used in Ukraine and Russia is mind-boggling. I have heard, these are just rumors, in World War II the amount of ammunition that was used to destroy each other, they wasted a lot of ammo and basically if they've drop 10 bombs, only one hit the target, or two. But in Ukraine and Russia, they've got flying bombs. So if you drop a bomb, it literally glides, it's got wings. You know like that advertisement, uh, Red Bull? You got wings, and it's got wings. And it flies, 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 until it pinpoints the location, and it strikes it exactly where it's supposed to hit. Because it maneuvers itself to where it is. Secondly, the technology that no other war has seen that is happening now and it, this is a turning point in mankind. If you haven't noticed that movie called Terminator by Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's like the technology we have here is way advanced than what is in Terminator. Of course in Terminator the robots are using AI to uh, carry out orders. We don't have robots on the ground but we've got more technology in the drones that is doing like virtually total annihilation all and we've got Boston Dynamic drone uh, robots in the uh, in United States but we're just like two to five years away from having mechanized humanoid robots on the ground as foot soldiers so that's not very distant away so if you're thinking that you've got an army of two million men forget it 30 robots can finish about 30,000 uh, human soldiers. It's very straightforward. Because what the drones have done, they have enabled to pick point every single soldier hiding in the bushes on the ground and drop grenade RPG rockets on them exactly where they are. So you don't have to go waste your time looking for where these people are hiding. The drones do that part for you. The operator from wherever he's in a safe location he spends like 24 hours in, you know, piloting that drone, operating the drone, and, and they target whatever they can find. And uh, a scary part of this process, if you think you can hide during the night, no. During the night, there's something called heat resistance from your body. There's heat resistance from my body. And practically, my body is not that big. But even, even a snake has heat resistance. So, whatever technology you're using in drones, 
they will seek out and destroy during the night time if you're hiding somewhere. So there's no way to hide during the day or the night. That's how scary it is. The level of drones and FPV and flying bombs to whatnot that they've used is staggering. Because I've heard figures something like the Ukraine army spends like on purchasing 35,000 FPV drones per month. And obviously, the next month they buy another 35,000. That means they will spend two FPV drones to find a single human soldier. That's how deadly this warfare is. So the question of the matter is, there's nowhere to hide. Because let's say if a drone comes on top of your head, where are you going to run? Are you going to run left, right, forward, backwards? The drone is faster. The drone speed is 150 kilometers. The human speed is barely 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers if he's a fast runner, like an athletic Olympic uh, decathlon runner. So you got a problem here. So the thing is, what are you going to do? What are your defenses? And uh, you know, you have to use artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is the next wave of technology. And already in drones, it's there. Because they use XY coordinates to pinpoint their location, XYZ. So until their target is locked on, the drone keeps calculating where is the target. And trust me, algorithms are pretty, pretty advanced these days. And the other part that I wanted to talk about, Boston Dynamics. They're making humanoid dogs. and humanoid robots. It's a matter of time when these mechanized robots will come to life. And they will, be, they will have enough computational AI in them to self-maneuver and self-function in a warfare or a battlefield. And that's very scary. That day is not far. And trust me, I'd rather pick a fight with a human than with a robot. Because robot is usually, well, if you haven't seen my previous video, there's a robot about, uh, there's a video uh, relating to artificial intelligence and uh, humanoid ro robots. So there's a way to defeat a robot, but I would rather pick a fight with a human. Because humans are very easy to predict. But at the same time, robots are getting very advanced. So we have to see what is the answer to all these problems. And if you watch my channel, you will see on my previous vlogs, that I've got topics on artificial intelligence and machine learning and you can see the depending on your choice and choose whatever you like. I've got over 630 vlogs and uh, you can see each playlist created for each topic as henceforward. The other part that I want to talk about is basically what the Russian military has done in Ukraine. They were using basically T-90 tanks with upgraded versions of everything you can from top to bottom regarding tank warfare. I'm not going to get into that because this is not about tanks, it's about AI. All of a sudden, they took, they were running out of tanks. So they took Fifteen hundred Second World War, or I think a little bit newer than Second World War. It's about 1970s uh, era tanks, and they replaced them with modern engines and modern uh, equipment, such as computers, and they put AI inside them. That was mind-boggling. So a tank is a tank, but when you put AI in a 1970s tank, it is equally as good as a T-90 tank of 2024. So they got surplus of 1,500 tanks, while Ukraine is still stuck with begging for M1A brands, which they got merely 30 pieces from the United States. So there is a difference of quantity and difference of supply and demand. Russia has, like I've heard, like they've got 10,000 tanks just sitting there, rotting. And what Russia also did, I'm not trying to like be nice to Russia, I'm pretty equal, but like, you know, United States got a lot of good firepower. The thing is, they made 
miniature robot tanks with machine guns with it's like a drone Basically, it's not called a tank. It's called a drone tank. So it does everything like a tank, but it's a miniature size. It's and it has a drone operator who's controlling it. The beauty of this is that if RPG fires on this tank, no problem because there's no human inside it. It can maneuver itself. It can locate the target and send the other backup units to destroy that unit. So it's pretty and like for aggressive amphibious assaults. This tank is really, really powerful. And you can go anywhere and attack your enemy very easily. So, this is the third technology that the warfare has produced. And now I'm going to talk about Hezbollah and Israel. How did Iran scare them? Mickey out of Israel. They created something called hypersonic missile. Now, a basic missile in the 1980s was basically it has a fuel projectile, it has a normal payload of warfare, uh, warhead, and it goes at a speed of two to three thousand kilometers. And it goes and lands on the target. And if it achieves that part unless it's not destroyed in the air and it makes a conventional uh, bomb explosion the thing with today what happened in Tel Aviv is that is so mind-boggling because the missile of 1980s was 3 Mach 3 speed the missile of today is Mach 9 Mach 11 Mach 12 or even 13 it's so fast when it takes off, it goes in normal speed and it just turbo boosts in Mach 9000, like Mach 9. And by, by the time it reaches its target, it's going so fast, like there's nothing that can stop it. Like I know that they've got some uh, defense shield and they can shoot down these missiles, but their top speed is like five, 6,000 kilometers. This thing is coming projectile at 9,000 kilometers. There is virtually no way if they fire 200 missiles at a target, how are you going to destroy 200 missiles coming at Mach 9? And if you saw, like everybody did on media, those 180 missiles when they were hitting the F-35s, it was scary. They were just hitting at the same location or nearly the same location within one kilometer, one after the other. I mean, I counted on top of my head 20 missiles on that target. Uh, you know, it was scary. And, and some of the fragments that fell. And even the fragments that were exploded in the air because they were falling down at such high speed when they landed on the target that created another explosion so it was pretty scary so that is mind-boggling and I'm not gonna get into if these one of these missiles has nuclear bomb because it's getting to that point right now and uh, you know seriously and it's pretty scary what's going on and uh, seriously you have to be very very careful you know because Iran uh, showed this technology I remember in 2018 or 20 when they destroyed a base somewhere in Middle East. And they showed this technology then, in 2019, that we have the ability, using GPS satellites, to pinpoint any base in Middle East and destroy that base. Because before that event, in 2019, uh, some of the Allies destroyed an airline passenger or something like that of Iran or a, or a warship or an oil tanker in uh, in the Persian Gulf. So that's the, the, the beauty of this uh, GPS coordinated hypersonic missile. And you know it's, it's scary to the point that you know if you're going to fire and the problem here like like if I was like I'm gonna play a neutral role. I'm I'm neither pro Iran. I'm neither pro Israel. But if I were getting incoming threats of these hypersonic missiles, I would be careful where and how many missiles I can take damage. Because as we know, if Iran has a stock of 500,000 missiles. Dude, 
You don't need a nuclear bomb to destroy the target. <laughs> it's that simple. Your, like 50,000 of these missiles can do the trick. And that's pretty scary to, to think about. It. Well, I think I've said enough. And uh, if you enjoyed today's video, click the like icon. And if you want to see more of the videos, click the red button. And um, keep watching my channel. And I'm going to be making more technology-related and artificial intelligence-related videos. So, wonderful people of the internet, happy trails until we meet again. And keep smiling until then. Ta-da, inshallah.